think, Kathy, for your clients, I mean, you know, to be able to really understand the wine business, to understand the challenges facing the growers now with whether what's going on with the weather or whatever it might be, um, they want us to ask those questions. You know, what's going on for you? Where do you see yourself? They really want you to, you know, they want to feel like you care. Now, this might make a lot of us uncomfortable because we don't necessarily consider ourselves aggressive. We might want to use the word assertive. But really what this means is they just want you to be looking out for their best interests in, in a number of ways. You know, asking them different, you know, questions about their business. Um, you know, and also, you know, have you been thinking about this? Have you been thinking about that? Not just the new tax laws, but to the extent that we can offer up some new ideas like, hey, you can just copy those things instead of going and getting it at the airport. Not the air, air. <laughs> she had the out of the box this morning. We were thinking about going back and getting our packets. She said, why don't we just copy them? I thought it was great. <laughs> they want to know that you offer a variety of services. They want you to make it easy to do business with you. And they want to feel like they're getting fair fees. So what are some of the best and easiest ways for us to understand our clients' businesses? First of all, attend industry meetings that are important to them. You know, what meetings are your clients going to? And then go ahead and be there at those meetings. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in our network, networking segment. Read industry publications. So what's going on, you know, in, in the industry? Great way to establish, you know, rapport and say, hey, I was just reading up on, you know, this new um, patent, you know, thing with, you know, my, uh, Apple and Samsung. And I know that's patent things are a really big deal for you. How are you handling that? You know, just different things that will really appeal to them attend industry CPE, and then again, ask questions. I mean, one of my favorite um, uh, quotes, it actually comes from the prayer of St. Francis, but then Stephen Covey turned it into one of his highly effective uh, highly habits for highly successful people, and that's seek first to understand, and then to be understood. So to ask as many questions as you can. At the end of the day, you know, what do our clients really buy? They buy solutions to problems for good feelings. What are they going to pay for? So if you go out and, um, you know, if you go out and you just go get a, you know, a pizza, you know, you're, you know, that's all you're really looking for. You solved the problem of being hungry. But if you really wanted a really good dining experience because it was a special event or whatever, going out and getting that pizza in the box is probably not necessarily what you're aiming for. You know, so you're probably willing to pay more than fifteen dollars to go and have that. You know, at the you know the location that I was telling about when I was at the bear. So keeping in mind that to the extent that you are delivering five star client service to your clients and creating those good feelings for them, that's when you can really justify the premium price. Because at the end of the day, you know, think about the most recent purchase you made. Or it might have been a big screen TV. Any, any big purchases we had around here? Car, house, boat. jewelry, boat. Did you buy a boat recently? Within a year or something. Like yeah. What was the first thing that happened when you bought that boat? How did you go about the process of buying the boat? Internet search. Okay. Um, looking for a used boat of a particular variety and you know, narrowed the field, found the variety we're going for, and then the internet search. Um, when you first found the boat, were you like, oh, that's it? I kind of was, but yeah. my old partner, he kind of wasn't. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but so often we get that sense of like, oh, that's it. And then we're like, okay, now how do I how do I justify it? Okay, you know, it's, it's a little more money than I wanted to spend, and et cetera. But, you know, so we buy emotionally and then justify with logic. So what we like to introduce to our clients here at Rainmaker Academy to really kick off this client service, this offering five-star client service, is something called the Bear Hug Action Plan. Some years ago, you may have been familiar with the IBM Corporation was losing money and on this. <clears throat> and a new CEO came in by the name of Lou Gerstmann. After his stint of turning around at IBM and making it one of the most profitable businesses in the world, wrote a book called Elephants and Kids. And in that book, he talked about what he did primarily to turn around IBM Corporation. He said <coughs> that he spent 
50% of his time every single week bear hugging clients on IBM Corporation. He got the engineers, the salespeople together with the large uh, clients of, of their firm and bear hugging. So at the end of 2008, as uh, times were looking grim, some of our clients, CPA firms that we worked with, I was thinking about, okay, what can we do special? <coughs> because here's the thing that we got very often. Well, you're telling me to go see my clients. What should I do? What should I say? How do I set up these meetings? What, what, what do I need to say? So we developed what we call a bear hug action plan. So we're going to ask you over the next 90 days to set aside specific time to go visit some of your clients. If you would like to have it, we'll be happy to share with you the Bear Hug Action Plan. We'll send it to you electronically and you can use it. And what it basically consists of is a process to set up your meetings with your client and ask them at least these seven questions. You'll see that primarily these questions have to deal with the future over these last three years has been this. Out of 20 clients we visited, one, on average, was getting ready to leave the firm, change accounting firms, and go somewhere else. Three to five of them, three to five, had additional service needs that we could provide. But whatever that additional service need might be that, that you have, whether you have a wealth management service, an IT service, something in depth tax planning. <coughs> so the key is look for those opportunities to save the client who might be leaving and then to follow up on those other service items. Now what we want you to do for the very first time is take this revenue action plan out and the very top section I'd like to ask you to take just a couple of minutes and jot down the clients that you want to go visit in the next 90 days. Put at least seven of them on this list. Let me make notes on it. So we'll give you two minutes to work on this. Oh, do you need one more? 